I'm actually going to pass it off to Owen so he can get started. Okay, fantastic. We have a lot to cover today. And so, you know, I'm going to jump right in. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Owen Video. No, that's not my real last name. My real last name is incredibly German and tough to pronounce. Uh, but it, it, um, I, became my, I became Owen Video after doing so much video and being recognized at the Starbucks on Oceanside in college and being recognized at the Starbucks on Vista Village Way, um, that I realized I needed to kind of protect my identity a little bit here. Now, I don't think all of you are going to need to protect your identities in that, in that um, regard, but I have a recurring segment on KUSI News. I will be on KUSI News this Sunday again, talking about, you know, streaming services from home and these different types of things. And I started my, my career at the Chamber. In fact, it was at the Chamber of Commerce Oceanside um, at the big events, uh, the big annual events, um, uh, the, the, the trade show that I met my very first big client. It was my very, very first four-figure client. It was Tony Oliva over at uh, the Hardwood Flooring Place on Oceanside Boulevard. And he paid me $4,000 to build him out a YouTube channel. Um, those videos to this day have thousands and thousands of views on them. Tony is uh, still a close friend, him and his family. And so I reached out to Scott when this whole COVID thing happened. And I said, hey, I would like to you know, do a presentation for your people at no charge for you just to help understand, help you guys understand how valuable your webcam is and your microphone is. All the stuff that you have right now to be on this Zoom call can be used to create videos on YouTube that will grow your career. And I don't care if you have an arts and crafts company, a multi-level marketing company, or a seven-figure retail business in Oceanside. I've worked with all of them. And I'm gonna show you today how to make your videos work on YouTube. But I have to give you a disclaimer first. This is not a YouTube SEO presentation. Oh, Lord help me. Let me tell you guys something. Everybody out there is talking about YouTube SEO, okay? And in case you don't know what YouTube SEO is, it works a little something like this, okay? So you go onto YouTube and you search for a search term. Tell me in the chat area right now if you are familiar with YouTube SEO. Write yes in the comment section or write no. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, because YouTube SEO is sort of like everybody's favorite shtick to, to, to sell to, to you, the business owner. Like, oh, hey, just do YouTube. Rank for this keyword term, right? Chiropractor in Oceanside or you know, how to relieve back pain, Oceanside, California. Uh, YouTube SEO is the biggest lie that is being foisted upon uh, business owners today. And if you can learn to avoid that strategy and instead adhere to the strategy I'm going to show you, you're going to be making videos that you actually love to do and that people actually want to watch. Okay. But here's how YouTube SEO works. SEO stands for search engine optimization, right? YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world. Okay. And you can go to the search bar there and type for things like, you know, how to fix a bathroom sink is sort of the example we use here today. I'm kind of pulling on the local plumber here. You go onto YouTube and you type for something and all these predictive words come up and you go, okay, you know, I'm a plumber. I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to do you know, a video called how to fix a bathtub faucet and how to fix a bathtub drain stopper. Okay. But here's, here's the problem with this strategy is it's a giant waste of your time. And there's, a, there's three big reasons why YouTube SEO is not going to get you where you want to go, okay? And here's a couple of those reasons. Number one, search on YouTube is only 10% of all the traffic on YouTube. So of all the people going to YouTube and watching videos, only 10% of them got there through a search, okay? And there is absolutely not enough people at any one time searching for your product or service to give your videos velocity, okay? And by velocity, we mean the speed with which to take off. And so business owners everywhere are taking these free courses and these, these low price courses that are like $97 YouTube ranking society and YouTube ranking course and YouTube SEO. And you're doing these videos, they get 17 views you might rank number one, you know, for that. You might rank number one for chiropractor in Oceanside, plumber in Oceanside, you know. 
Uh, the problem is there's only 17 people a week searching for that search term. And so there's never enough search volume for you to, to, to get the type of exposure that you need. And here's what I believe. I believe that there are people on this call right now that have a message so important that if only more people would see what you do, your business, your brand would take off. How many of you believe that that's you? that you have a message so powerful, that you know your stuff so well, that if only more people saw it, you would take off. Because that's what I believe. And so YouTube SEO is not the way to get more people on your, uh, on your, uh, on your eyeballs, okay? And, and step number two is this. There's no guarantee that you will even have success, okay? Every plumber in America is being told, hey, these are the SEO terms that you have to rank for. Uh, you, you got it. So every plumber in the world is doing these titles. The, the challenge is, are you able to compete with everybody in the space? Let me give you a quick example, okay? Because I'm going to get a little arrogant on you for a second. I apologize ahead of time, by the way. I'm going to give you brash, okay? Um, I'm Owen Video. I'm well known in the space. I host the major conferences. Uh, you know, I'm the MC for the major conference. So I, I know... What I'm doing, I have 50,000 uh, subscribers on my, it's, it's more than that now, it's like 50, uh, 52,000, 53,000. Um, and I partnered up with Social Media Examiner. Do you guys know Social Media Examiner? They're based out of Poway, okay? They're the biggest social media uh, education platform in the country. And they host the biggest conference in social media right here in San Diego. Okay, luckily, it was like we had the conference this year and then the next week, this whole COVID thing happened. So we got to have the conference this year. Anyway, I did a video partnership with them called How to Edit Videos on Your Phone Like a Pro. The whole goal, the whole guide was, goal here was to rank for how to edit videos on your phone, okay? So here's a video that I did, Captain Cool, with the biggest you know, social media company out there and I didn't even rank. So how are you going to rank? And that's why SEO is, is a real, real bad idea, okay? Search is only 10% of traffic. There's no guarantee uh, that you're even going to rank for that term. And searchers do not become customers. Here's why. The psychology of a searcher. Who is searching right now for how to fix a bathroom sink? You can imagine it, right? Maybe it's your husband. <laughs> I know that I was fixing my bathroom sink when I Googled those very terms, okay? And you can imagine the towels are already out. The tools are already being used and there's water just like spurting from, you know, from the sink. Kid's got a bucket, you know, he's like, how to, oh, okay, well, how to, let's go to YouTube here, how to fix a bathroom sink. Okay, a, a searcher is a DIY person. A searcher is a do-it-yourself person. And they want to, go find an answer to their problem right now, X out and go back to doing what they were doing. They don't give a rat's patoot about you and your brand and how much you know. You are a utility to them. You are a little more than a video dictionary. And let me just ask you guys something. When was the last time you went to your bookshelf and you see all the books that are on your shelf and you're gonna pick out a book, you're gonna read something tonight and you go, oh, I'm gonna read the dictionary, right? It never happens, right? Because the dictionary is boring. And when you go after you, YouTube SEO terms, what you're doing is you're becoming a video dictionary, all right? Uh, you are becoming a resource to people. They don't, they don't care who you are. They only care what you can do for them. So our, our key point here is that SEO is not gonna be your strategy for making videos on YouTube. Instead, okay, you are gonna make videos that are based on your thoughts, your passions, your insights, your products and services. And when you do, you're gonna find that YouTube is recommending and suggesting your videos in the related and recommended video section. Now, I hope for some of you, this is a, a, a breath of fresh air, I really do, because you know, you get to be free to do the types of videos that you really want to do. You don't have to do how to fix a bathroom sink, right? You don't have to do how to sell 
you know, uh, how to buy a house in Oceanside, right? Good to see Rich Sparks, Robert Snow on the call. You get to do the content that you really like. And here's what's going to happen. When your audience, when your target customers are watching videos on YouTube about sports, maybe they're watching the office clips, maybe they're watching, um, uh, you know, um, one of their favorite YouTubers, and your video is going to appear in the sidebar from YouTube because YouTube recognizes that your video would be a good fit for that viewer. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about when I say recommended and, uh, and related sources? Do you guys understand that term? Okay, everybody's understanding that. So that's the core philosophy. That's what the top YouTubers in, in the country are, are not sharing with you. Why? Because it's, it's hard. You actually have to have a good show. You have to have a good video in order for YouTube to recommend it. And sort of the thinking is, sort of the thinking is, well, I was able to become a top YouTuber, but y'all wouldn't be able to become top YouTubers. Only the best can be in the recommended and suggested. Is that Sam Colts all? Right? It's elitist and it's wrong because those top YouTubers were at one point a brand new video creator just like you. And yes, I'm saying video creator, even though you're a business owner. But as you start creating videos, you are becoming a video creator. You are a business tuber, a biz tuber. Okay? And we want to start thinking about your message. We want to start thinking about how you present yourself on camera and how to create a video that people will actually enjoy watching. I'd love for you to tell me what you do in the comment section right now, because there's always somebody who's like, you know, I'm in finance and it's boring. We talk about loans all day, right? I get it. But what I'm gonna show you right now is I'm gonna show you, what's up, Rigor? <laughs> Good to see you. By the way, this is the Air 5. This is how I say high five, hello. Um, to my friends in the video space. And so as I'm slapping the screen, I want you to understand that about me. What I'm gonna be sharing with you today is a strategy for making better videos. And business owners all over the country are already doing this, okay? Uh, let's take a look at an example right now from Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike is a licensed physician, a practicing doctor with a, an explosive YouTube presence. Take a look at his titles right now. Look at this one. Medical Confessions with Philip DeFranco. Not, not search engine content at all, and yet it has 621,000 views. How about um, Keep Insulting Doctors and We Won't Have Any? Who is going to YouTube on a Saturday afternoon and going, oh, you know, keep insulting doctors and soon we won't have any? Who's, type, who's searching for that? Nobody. This doctor is making videos that he wants to make and they're so good, people are watching them. That's what you need to do. Here's another example of a practicing attorney. This is called Legal Eagle. And what he does is he creates videos that react or analyze real world legal situations. For example, uh, this lawyer reacts to legal memes. And what does he have on there? 331,000 views in just, in just two weeks. Real lawyer reacts to crazy ex-girlfriend. And then they're, they're, this is a, like a, a viral meme. He's reacting to something happening, happening on the internet. He's also done other videos like real lawyer reacts to The Witcher, where he will analyze sort of TV lawyer situations and give his opinion on them. None of these videos are optimized for search. They were all done based on him making a video he thought would be interesting and it's blowing up his channel and his business. His business teaches, uh, uh, educates law school students on how to pass the bar. Okay, so how can we apply that to you? Well, let's take a look at a real world example. Uh, this is a gentleman named Scott Weiss who is a financial consultant. And Scott's a lot like us. He's a business want, owner that wants to grow his company and get more customers. Why did he come to YouTube? Well, he came to YouTube because he could amplify his message 
at no cost, didn't have to pay for ads. All he had to do was deliver a message once a week into a video camera. How many of you have the capability to deliver a message once a week into a video camera? I'm gonna hear from you in the comment section. Look at Scott's strategy here. Not only did Scott get 1.6 thousand subscribers on his channel, but he also developed videos that had no search engine value and yet generated for him more views than he ever thought he would get. 30, Social Security age 62, 66, and 70. 33,000 views. Retirement planning in your, I think that's uh, like 70s or 40s. Retirement planning in your 40s, retirement planning in your 50s. And we're seeing 28,000, 24,000, 13,000 views. He is not an artiste, you know, drama student. Uh, Scott, in fact, is the, the son of, of, a, of a financial consultancy firm agency. He took the business over from his dad, but wanted to make videos to get more views. How did we do that? We built him a series. We built him a series and all of you need to be building videos in a series. Think of your brand as a table and a series of videos as the leg, the legs of that table. So for example, we were building Scott a channel that would ge generate customers for him and so we created a series of series. I'm gonna share two of those series with you. The first series was called Retirement Planning. Can you actually see it? Here, retirement planning in your 40s, retirement planning in your 50s, so on and so forth. Became his best performing series, by the way. And so in this series, we made a whole bunch of videos that go deep on that topic of retirement planning. Real estate and retirement, taxes and retirement, healthcare and retirement, retirement communities, retirement and investing, and so on and so forth. Then we created a second series, okay? We call this one smart investing. And this one was investing in your 20s, investing in your 30s, investing in your 40s, investing in your 50s, and investing for retirement. And notice how these series eventually link to each other. And what you're doing is you're telling the YouTube algorithm that you are an expert in these topics. You're so much of an expert, you made more than one video on the topic and you've got multiple topics on which to pull from, which when viewed as a whole, creates a body of work that you are now being recognized for, and this is why you don't need SEO. Because the YouTube algorithm understands investing, retirement, social security, Medicare, all of these terms create relevancy that is attached now to Scott. So whenever somebody is watching in his, in his core demographic group, right, which YouTube will, will tell you, YouTube gives you the analytics on that, is now, so you got a guy who's like in his, 40, in his 40s, he's watching sports, and one of Scott's videos appears in the sidebar. Why? Because YouTube recognizes that 40-year-old guy is watching sports with similar sort of search history on YouTube would like a video like this. And this has worked, it's paid off in spades. The first thing that happened is YouTube, his videos got him noticed in Forbes. One of the article writers at Forbes was doing a search for financial investors on YouTube and guess who they found? They found the guy with all the videos, right? And Scott Wood got to be interviewed. Uh, not only by the Forbes article, but then the Forbes article led to a guest appearance on another industry conference. And this whole, he, all of a sudden, he starts to become sort of like the well-known financial guy. But we also had a, a massive new lead flow. In fact, the lead flow was so big, we had to build him a funnel. We had to build him. How many of you guys know what a funnel is, right? Like a, you know, like enter your name and email here, and then you get an email series. How many of you guys know what a funnel is? So I'm going to come back to funnel, Okay. He didn't have one. All he was doing was like, hey, call me. Hey, call me. Hey, call me. Then he got so many leads. It's like, I can't, I can't take all these leads. I need a funnel to qualify them. So we ended up building him a funnel. But he was getting, he had a $900 a year client come in and say he wants to retire, saw my videos, and was like, I got to talk. Potentially, that's a $12,500 client for him. Now, I have to be honest with you. I can't remember if that client 
actually close the deal. But I do know this, he got another call too. And I'll never forget the day when he called me and told me about this because this was the big, the big deal for him is he got a $30,000 client who found his videos on YouTube and came into the funnel. Okay, so your content strategy should be in series. Let me ask you this. You already told me, you guys already told me what you do. Okay, let me, let me go to the chat here and see. I help other people start their own business selling jewelry, Karen, business consultation, uh, Metal Lighthouse Inc., commercial grade LED light fixtures and components. It's like ProCal and Vista, right? John is Rigor and he's a software engineer, okay? So you guys, we see what your profession is. What are the topics that you could be making videos on that would help to create a body of work that position you as the expert in that field. If you're in real estate, it might be um, single family homes. It might be um, VA financing. It might be that you're really good at home tours. Uh, maybe you're really good at negotiation. May these are the different topics that make up your brand. I want you to brainstorm with me in the chat area, what are four topics that would be good legs for the table of your business? I'd love to hear from you guys because those four things, that's your content strategy. And once you've picked a leg of your table, let's say that it's, um, let's go with real estate. Let's go with, let's say it's, um, uh, you focus a lot on home staging making a house look good to help itself faster and for more money. Okay, so let's say you're home staging. So the, the direct, like sort of the, the initial idea is like, okay, I'm gonna do a video called how to, how to stage your home so it sells faster. <laughs> Those are the nasty titles. That's the title every realtor is making. You instead wanna position your, your title as, as something a little, bit, a little bit different, as maybe like the best home selling strategies in California right? A little more inflammatory, a little more fun, you know? And it's like, well, what are they? Home staging, right? That's the answer. That's the big reveal in your video. So you're going to do something like topics on like um, how to stage your kitchen, how to stage your living room, how to stage your front yard, how to stage the backyard. Do you see where I'm going? The tendency is to make one big video on like how to stage everything. But instead, what you want to do is take home staging as a category and break it up into little segments where each segment becomes a five minute video. And you're using these videos to educate people into your brand. So I'd love to hear from you guys uh, in, in that regard. So that is our tip number one is get YouTube in, and get YouTube to recommend and suggest your videos by building in a series. Okay, so now you know what videos you're going to create. That leads us to tip number two of today's three tips, which is use a video structure. I have built my, this is where we get into, you have to make a good video. How do you make a good video, right? Because I know a lot of you are public speakers, um, you're bloggers, um, you, even I think many of you are uh, copywriters and have written books. Um, the format or the structure for writing a book, writing a blog, delivering a keynote, or speaking at a Toastmasters meeting is not the formula for YouTube, okay? And all videos, all media follows a structure. And you want to use a video structure that is proven to keep a viewer's attention. And otherwise, I'm gonna show you how to apply a structure that will make any topic interesting. Now, when we talk about video structure, let's, let's take an example, because I really need you to understand this. If you come away with nothing, I want you to understand this, is structure of video. All video has structure. Here's an example from The Office. Let's take a look at The Office, a basic sitcom structure, okay? Every episode of The Office opens up with a cold open. This is where the show starts and there's a two-minute joke 
and then the intro begins. Dun na dun na 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 dun 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 na right? The whole thing. That's the cold open. And then what? There's a commercial break. After that, we have the setup of the show. They tell you what the plot's gonna be and what the big objection is to solve. As the story progresses, they lead us to a cliffhanger right before the end of the show. And that's where we have another commercial. When we come back from the commercial, the show ends, we see the biggest hurrah, and the credits roll. Every sitcom of this style, Parks and Recreation, et cetera, et cetera, are filmed with this structure. Infomercials also have a structure. You're gonna, I know you've seen this before, right? Like, are you tired of peeling potatoes and just scraping your fingers and bleeding all over everything? Right, there's, sorry if I'm getting loud, I'll turn, I'll turn it down a little bit. Um, it starts with a problem, offers a solution, provides proof the solution works, and then delivers a call to action. So are you tired of, of peeling potatoes? Well, you gotta use these new potato gloves. They'll help you make mashed potatoes, French fries, and uh, anything else you want. Only $10.99, call today and you'll get two. Now, here's the, here's the trick to infomercials. Infomercials will actually do this, these, four, uh, these three parts, two or three times before they do this, you know? So are you tired of scraping your hands? Well, get these new potato peelers. They make mashed potatoes and French fries. And it's easy, easy cleanup. You put them right on your hands and you can make all these illustrious meals. Just call today for $10.99, right? You see that? So the structure is there. How many of you guys recognize this structure? How many of you guys have like, you, you see it and you go, I get it. Like all, every infomercial, set it and forget it. They all have this structure, okay? Because your structure, functions like a checklist where you have these psychological goals that you want to accomplish in your video. And each of those psychological goals correlates with what you say or what you do on camera. This is where everybody messes up because the whole goal, I think what everybody does is they go on camera and they say whatever they want to say. Well, I've always done it in my keynotes like this. Well, I've always addressed the board like this, right? And it doesn't work on YouTube. Okay. So what I'm gonna show you today is how you should film every single video that you, that you shoot from now on forever until you get to like level two and you're, you're ready to, you know, maybe up your, you've got a thousand subscribers and you're good now, you know? This is how I want you to start. I, I built my channel on this and I have built hundreds of channels on this. And when I say channel, my clients, over 99% of my clients have been business owners like you who wanna build a YouTube channel for their business. I do not necessarily help creators prank channels, full-time YouTubers, right? Yeah, we have the show where we dump buckets of paint on people, like that's not what I do. Okay, I take thought leaders and amplify their reach with YouTube. So when I say my customers, when I say I've helped, I'm talking about people like you, all right? So here is the video structure and you should memorize this, you should print, in fact, we're gonna give a copy of this away to Eddie today. I have a whole PDF I'm gonna share with you. You get it for free. This is only available in my premium course, but I'm giving it to everybody today. You need to print this out and tape it to the bottom of your camera so that you never have to memorize a line. All you have to know is the video topic you're gonna to do and then follow these five points. G-R-E-A-T. First, grab attention. Then relate to the problem. Then explain your solution, provide actual proof, and then finally tell them what to do, okay? Let's go through these in a little bit more depth. First of all, grab attention. This is how you're gonna stop the scroll with a powerful attention demanding hook that entices your viewer to stop scrolling and watch your video. Typically what you're gonna say is, Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do X so that you can achieve Y and finally experience Z. Then you're gonna move into R, relate to the problem. Relate to the viewer, show them you know them. This is where everybody messes up. You have to dig into the problem. Okay, don't assume that the viewer 
read the text or even heard the hook. They might have been watching in silent mode. This section is where you really identify with the audience to prove your credibility. Okay? So relate to the problem, create familiarity. Hey, um, if you've been trying to sell your home or hey, if you wanna sell your home, but you wanna make top dollar because you have a beautiful property, but you're not exactly sure what to do, today I'm gonna to show you a technique that will help you to sell your home faster, right? Because you, you probably don't know everything about this game and you really need some help in selling your home. You grew up in this house, right? Like it really needs to be sold for maximum you know, maximum dollar. You're speaking into the needs of your audience and you're getting them to go, yeah, that's me. That's totally me, right? So let me ask you guys in the chat area, what is the biggest problem your best customers face? The biggest problem your best customers face. And if you're, if you're a council person, I'd like you to speak into the issue that most Oceanside voters are interested in. So in R, you're going to relate to the problem. Before E, you explain your solution. This is sort of your sales pitch, okay? But if you turn it into a sales pitch, they'll log off, okay? You instead need to structure your explanation in such a way where you're not presenting a solution or the solution, but your unique solution that they can't find anywhere else. How do you do that? I just sell homes. I just sell homes in Oceanside. No, you don't. You have the Oceanside home selling system, right? Politicians aren't just trying to, you know, fix the homeless problem. It's the, the three-step homeless care program, right? I've got a, a great client who um, sells gardening tools all across the United States. Uh, actually phenomenal uh, testimonial too of, of, of how well they've done. But, you know, when I found them, they were doing things like, you know, just dig yourself four rows in the dirt. All you gotta do now is just dig yourself four rows in the dirt. And what we helped them to do was reframe that solution into, now in order to do this, you need the new Haas Tools row maker with four jointed edges at the bottom, a, a durable handle that won't unscrew and will make those rows a snap. Hey, don't break your back using traditional garden tools. You're gonna break your back, right? So E is explain your solution. A is actual proof, okay? Actual proof means tell a story, please. For the love of Moses, tell a story. You know how to do that. You explain your solution and you say, let me tell you about Travis, who's my you know, garden tool maker, doing a great job out there. <laughs> doing exactly what I'm doing, right? You explain your solution and you say, I want to explain to you the homeless care program that, that I'm putting forth. And I want to share with you a story about Jenny, 18 year old runaway, you know, dot, dot, dot. And you tell, you tell uh, a quick story, a 30 second to one minute story. Okay. You can also tell your personal experience. You can also just say, Hey, don't take my word for it. Right. Sally May did X, Y, Z, and she bought my program and made this much more money, whatever the case might be. Use actual proof, faces of real people in your, in your videos. And you know what another part of actual proof is? This is a chance for so many of you to get to use the before and after pictures you've been taking for 10 years, right? Like how many of you have a collection of before and after pictures? It's like, man, how do I use these? You know, how do I really show people like what the house looked like before and what it looks like now? right? You do that with actual proof. And then finally in T, you tell them what to do next. This is where you call the viewer into action and you tell them what you want them to do. You want to avoid generalities like visit our website or follow us on Facebook. In fact, if you want my coaching is for every five videos you do, four of them say, watch this video next. Watch this video next. Watch this video next. Why? Because if you say, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product in five out of five videos, you are, you're, 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 you're just white noise. You're vanilla, right? You're a salesman on, on YouTube. You want to instead be like, hey, don't even call me yet until you're a fully qualified customer. Watch this video next. You would rather they spend 20, 30 minutes watching your videos back to back to back, which is why we create in a series 
than wasting 20 minutes of your time on the phone being unqualified. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen to like the end of these worthless coffee shop meetings? How about you meet somebody at a, at a chamber meeting, at a breakfast meeting, and you send them to your video series where the last video says, hey, you've watched all five of my videos at this point. If you would like to sit down and talk more about what we do, go ahead and visit my form on my website today and let's set up a 15 minute Zoom call. Okay, huge what I'm giving you guys here. Now, I have a script for all of this. This is a script for um, G, R, E, A, and T. And we're gonna give that to you in a PDF as soon as this presentation is over. So I'm giving you guys my perfect video script that has worked for hundreds of different creators, uh, video uh, business owners like you, and it will work for you. In fact, it continues to work to this day with Karen Carr, who is one of my clients and is also a real estate coach. She teaches real estate agents how to use video. When she came into my program, her, her best video got 349 views in three weeks. Her first video after using my formula had 641 views in four days. How many of you would love to be in front of 641 people for, this video was an hour, but her average watch time was like 20 minutes. How many of you guys would love to be in front of 641 people for 20 minutes showing them your expertise in the next four days. Hmm, I need a, a church music sound effect, like a hallelujah, right? Because that's how I feel about it. But not only that, she used my formula to create a product launch selling a course that got her 12 new customers, something like $50,000 in revenue. And that brings us to the third point, the point, the final point of today, is driving sales. Now that you know what videos to create and, and you know how to create them, you know what to say on camera, creating videos should be a snap for you now. I know there's some like sea legs, you gotta get your sea legs a little bit, but the whole idea is like, okay, today I'm gonna talk about, you know, um, I'm gonna talk about um, um, LEDs versus some other kind of light. G-R-E-A-T, how do I grab attention? Hey, are you curious to know the difference between this light and this light? Which uses more energy? Which has best color options? That's good. That's my hook. R, how do I relate to the problem? Hey, if you're watching this, um, you're probably looking at getting a light fixture in your house, your business, or maybe even on city property, and you want to know, blah, 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 right? You're just, that's all you're doing. You're just going through it. It's taped to your camera, and you're at G R E A T. Well, here are some stats that should motivate you to start making videos now because 82% of all viewed content online will be video. And that's this year in 2020. 80% of what anybody does online is video. That gives you a great place to be in the recommended section or be the next video that pops up. 76% of marketers report an increase in sales from video. And I don't know how many marketers you know. I know a bunch of them. Marketers hate reporting sales because it's, it's like... That's where you win or, or lose. Companies get to fire you based on reporting sales. So marketers are really like careful with what they report a sale going to. 76% of marketers go, yeah, video's awesome. And viewers are watching videos eight times longer, watching live videos eight times longer. And that's why, meaning that live video and YouTube video both provide you a great return. That's why Pam, who runs a chiropractor office, was able to get six new local clients, despite the fact that her YouTube channel was reaching people all over the world, okay? All over the world, people are watching your videos, including people in your town, which is why you don't have to put Oceanside, California, 92056 in all of your videos. That is a waste of your time, okay? When instead, you are creating these video series that all come back to your core offer. That's what I'd like to hear from you right now. What is your core offer? Because if your answer is, well, I have seven, then yikes, we're in trouble. Okay. You can't, you don't build a business off of McDonald's had one thing, right? Until they had more things, but we're not McDonald's, are we? We need to have a core offer and all of your videos need to come back to that core offer. And what you do is you build a series 
where all five videos in that series all link back to your offer. And then you create another series. And when I say all, what I mean is one in five, one in five, like they're all built around that, that model. You've got another series, 10 videos on the web that lead back to your offer. And as you continue to build these series on YouTube that all lead back to your offer, the question is not, you know, am I going to make money doing this? It's could you even handle that many new leads? Angelica is a fitness coach in uh, Hawaii. She came on board with the program just a, a couple of weeks ago. She put her first video up on YouTube and within the hour had a lead. Now, that's an amazing story. I can't you know, guarantee that for everybody, but it's there. That opportunity is absolutely there. And so what I wanna show you next, I wanna show you how you can take your journey into the next step if that's something that you believe you could be successful with. Because there's some people right now that are like, you know, this is great, it's not for me. And I, I get that, hey, thanks for coming, right? But there are some of you that are like, okay, Owen, I get it, I can do that, makes sense, what do I do next? Well, I wanna share with you the video sales machine. The video sales machine is my seven module course that I have put together for business owners like you to watch the trainings on demand in your own time and I have provided you everything from video scripts, video titling strategies, how to upload on YouTube, how to set up your channel on YouTube, to how to go live on Facebook and test your content, how to create a free offer, how to create a click funnel, if you're not familiar with funnels, how to create quick websites that convert sales. And we've put it all together in this seven module course with two bonuses. Every module has a series of short videos inside of it, and training documents, templates, and tools to help you actually accomplish the training. This is the same program that Scott Weiss, who closed $30,000 in seven weeks, uh, used to grow his channel. It's also the same channel that Keith over here used to add $2,000 in new business to his nail salon, right? His wife's nail salon. We cover a ton of topics in the video sales machine including how to do a video Zoom call to make a sale, how to do a video proposal, right? With a PowerPoint kind of like this. We talk about how to use, how to boost videos on Facebook. And if there's anybody here that's interested in this product today, because I don't want to come off like a hardcore salesperson guy, but anybody that wants to get this program today, we're also going to include these free video special effects packs. We have over 25 different transitions, lower thirds, thumbnail templates and frames and different graphics that you can use in your videos royalty free. In fact, we made them and we're giving them to you. This alone is valued at $500. We sell it on our website today for $500. You can go to the video marketing school, click on video branding elements and you can get it for $500. If you enroll in the course, we're gonna give it to you for free so that you can add these to your videos and they will look professionally done. The cost to enroll for the Chamber of Commerce is $175 times three payments. You get six modules. Okay, I said it was seven. It's six modules with two bonuses. Module one is the video blueprint, the video power plan, and so on and so forth. It's all there. And you can go to youtubesalesmachine.com if that's something that you want to do. In terms of the bonus for today, okay, uh, I consider myself to be a man of integrity. So when I say it's of today, it's, it'll, it'll be of today. It's designed to encourage you to make a purchase, you know, new, newsflash, right? But, but here's the thing. Um, uh, I will leave that open until Saturday night because I know some people are going to watch the replay. Right, so if it's if you if you want to do a Saturday night, we'll we'll include the bonus um, as uh, as well. But after that, we're just going to take it out of the funnel, and, and that'll that'll be it'll just go back to the the, the regular thing. So um, that's for all you guys there, and I want to thank you uh, for having me on the the call today. This is something that I was passionate about um, because the Oceanside Chamber is oh, has been a big part of our story, and so we hope to continue to grow with 
the members at the Oceanside Chamber. And I would like to turn the time back over to, to you, Emerald, to ask any questions or to engage with you guys. I actually don't have an appointment for a little bit, so I'm happy to stay on here and just workshop with you guys as long as uh, you feel it's appropriate. So thank you for having awesome. me. Well, thank you so much for that, Owen. Um, that presentation was just jam-packed with a lot of really um, valuable information. So thank you for that. Um, we actually do have some questions in the chat. Um, the first one is from Karen Leventhal. She's asking if um, that great formula is the same for Facebook Live videos. Yeah, great question. No, it is not the same for Facebook Live. In fact, the great video structure is one of many structures that we teach at the Video Marketing School. So we have a Facebook Live structure and it's slightly different. Why? Because with Facebook Live, you have two different things going on. You have live viewers popping up. And so you've got to have, um, you've got to be uh, rehearsed. You've got to sort of like be going through a process that will engage your live viewers no matter what time they plug in to the stream, right? They might come in two minutes into it. They might come in 10 minutes into it. And if they don't see something interesting, they're gonna log off, okay? The other part of that is you will get more replay viewers than you will live viewers. You know, we, we do two Facebook live shows a week. They're both, they both have over 100 live viewers that tune in. We get thousands of live views on those per week. Okay, and you guys can tune us, it, it's at belive.tv is the Facebook page, and then the other one is Owen Video. Um, I got so lost in bragging about myself. I, I forgot, I forgot where I was. So the replay viewers, the re you'll get more replay viewers. So you have to start your live for the replay viewer, but then you have to like keep it going uh, for the live viewers. And uh, I have a whole module on that inside the video sales machine. All right. Um, and I actually have a couple questions, um, you know, on in regard to the videos. So um, for average length, you mentioned that people drop off the, the one person had had a video of over an hour, but you only uh, mentioned her viewer time was about an average of just 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so is there, you know, a typical drop off or just like a best practice you could recommend to us? Yeah. Um, yeah. Live video on YouTube is part of a broader strategy. Okay. So largely on YouTube, I want you to think about making five minute videos and getting your watch time to somewhere around 50%. Okay. That's like milestone one. Can you get a viewer to watch two minutes and 30 seconds of you? That's a good thing. Okay, 60% um, is like a top performing YouTube channel. So let's see if we can get five minutes at 50%. Now, Karen goes live once a week to, to talk to people just like this. So that's gonna be a much lower percentage of watch time. Like her watch time and that is like 20%. But what's 20% of an hour? Seriously, what's, Alexa, what's 20% of 60? 20% is 60 is 12. 12. Okay, so 12 minutes. What's longer? It's, it's embarrassing. I'm an artist. Um, hey, not a quick math either. Or not good at quick math either, so that's okay. <laughs> I'm still, I've got all the kids' common core in my head. I don't know what the heck to believe anymore. Um, 12, 12 minutes is bigger than two minutes and 30 seconds, right? So, so with watch time and average view duration, by the way, that's the most important metric on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. That's why we have structure. The structure that I showed you is designed for watchability. What most people do is they say, today I'm gonna talk about blah, and my name is Billy Jean, and I'm the guy who da 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 It has nothing to do with the viewer, everything to do about you. YouTube videos are not business cards, okay? They're designed for the viewer, not you. And that's, that's what this structure is designed to do. That's the scaffolding that this is designed to put you in so that you don't get off course, right? So your live videos are gonna have less retention, but longer minutes viewed. On YouTube, that should not be your goal. Right now, your goal should be pre-recorded five-minute videos. Okay. And what does that mean? It means G should be about 30 seconds. R, about a minute. E, two minutes. That's what, three, 30. And then a minute and a half to wrap it up, to provide proof and then close it up. That's your five-minute video right there. So let's go 30 seconds. Uh, for the hook, the intro should be like the R should be like a minute. E is two minutes. And then 
actual proof 30 seconds. Tell them what to do next. Actual proof one minute. Tell them what to do next 30 seconds and be done. Thank you for answering that. Um, I just have one more question and I'll open it up to see if anyone has any others, um, but I'm thinking some other people might be thinking this as well. Um, my question is for you, just um, do you have a specific day that's more popular um, when you should be posting your, your pre-recorded videos? I know no, no, here's the thing. There's 2 billion people on the internet at any given time, okay? And everybody that you're trying to reach is logging on at various 20 minute intervals throughout the day. How many of you guys agree with that and believe it? Right, so the, your people are on all the time. The, the idea is when they see you, when you publish a video, is it exciting enough to even tap on? Because how, every, how YouTube and Facebook kind of work, Facebook's a little different. Facebook traps you. You can only go as far as your friend's friends, right? Uh, and then they have to start sharing. YouTube is not like that. With, with YouTube, you can access the entire world immediately. Okay, there's no restrictions on how far your video goes. But on YouTube, like what has to happen is they send your video out to a few people and they see if they click. If nobody does, your video kind of dies there. But they send your video out to a few people and if you get, if you get a good click-through rate, you know, 3%, 4%, they'll send it to a few more. Can you maintain that 3%? They'll send it to a few more, right? And so on and so forth. And so you want to have videos that someone can look at and they go, I can consume this. Five minutes, easy. It's short enough, right? But it's interesting enough to where they go, you know, that's valuable to me. Even though I wasn't searching for it, I'm going to stop what I was doing and look at this. And here's my belief. My belief is all of you have that, those topics. All of you have those topics, right? Think about The Profit on NBC. Have you guys seen that show, The Profit on NBC? Right? He never, it's a great show. If you haven't seen it, it's a great show for entrepreneurs. I have my kids watch it and they report back to me on like, okay, what was the big hook of the show? And they, like, it's a whole thing. But in that profit, he, in that movie, he, that, that TV show, he, he saves businesses. But he doesn't come out and say, today I'm gonna show you how to save a dying candy business. He instead just saves the dying candy business. And this is what you guys need to do. You know, Matt, when you're talking about, um, and forgive me if I'm off on the analogy, I'm, I'm sort of just brainstorming with you, you know, but in fact, Matt, what is your core product that you, that you sell? There you go. Uh, I have three core products initially. I, I started the company last August. I have a ceiling fixture, a wall fixture, and a retro kit that can go in pretty much anything. Those are the three legs of your table. Are you with me? Yep. Okay, so on that ceiling fixture, so you're uh, uh, residential. Commercial. Commercial, okay, on that, that, uh, that ceiling fixture, um, what, is, what is a big problem in that space? Like, why does your product solve a problem? Uh, my product solves a problem in that a lot of commercial ceiling light fixtures are only available in two colors. Most of them are actually one color. I uh, have a close relationship with a painter. I make everything in Oceanside and I can get any color, you know, yeah. if you want, you know, Who's whatever. Audience? Gyms, retail shops. Uh, I would say schools, military, prisons, industrial applications. Wow. wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to go in a different direction. I was going to go with um, why no one's <clears throat> why no one's buying from you. What's the answer? Your store is dull and drabby. You've got this yellow light, like Joe versus the volcano. It feels more like I'm in a prison than in a retail store. Problem is you're in prisons, not retail stores. Let's go to that analogy, right? Um, you wanna go to, let's just go high level, um, how to improve morale, right? You wanna talk about like how to create positive energy in your workspace. We're gonna talk about that today. And I'm gonna be sharing with you the color that will most bring a peaceful feeling into your school or your government building. Stay tuned, it's the lighthouse right? And you say, hey, I'm Matt with The Lighthouse, where we shine a light on all of your problems. Uh, did you know? I like that tagline. <laughs> right? Did you know that the lighting in your place affects your students or visitors feel? And here's my facts and science. And again, your big reveal is your product or service, right? Problem is, customers, there's only two kind of lights out there, this one and this one. But 
I'm introducing today the brand new Matt Barnes Metal Lighthouse Ceiling Fixture. Take a look. While other, you know, and that's your, that's your big E, explain the solution. The R is how do you improve? Why, you know, your eyes hurting, like you, you notice that people are like not happy to be at work. So that may not have been a perfect video for you, but do you see how I got there? Do you see it? Would that be is that valuable to you or am I going nuts? Over uh, yeah, it'd be very valuable. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And so you see what we're doing, guys, is we're building sort of on a, on a higher level, right? It's not like, let me sell you this. It's let me solve your problem. Now, we can go even further and talk about how to create a show. That's sort of like where I'm really good is, is it's not showing them what you do so much as having a show about what you do. Kind of like the HGTV guys. For example, we're working with a plumber right now. They've already got 10,000 subscribers. They've got like seven different locations across the Pacific Northwest. They're doing okay. And we're creating, instead of like doing how to fix a, a, a broken plunger thing, we're doing more stuff that's like, the nastiest pipes in South Utah. And we're creating more of this higher level, the common person would enjoy watching that, as opposed to, here's a video only designed for people with plumbing problems today, right? Your customers are right here. Your customers are right here, but they're part of a bigger audience. And you need to be finding ways to make your videos connect to the bigger audience so that your customer finds you. That's what we teach with this model. All right, well, thank you for that, Owen. We actually have a, another question and it's from Karen Leventhal. Um, she's asking, you know, and I know you did um, go over this a little bit earlier, but you know, how do you get people to, to start watching um, your videos? And maybe you could share just even a, an easy tweak that you could make or, you know, that you're seeing people out there doing um, just another takeaway. Yeah, I would, I would go with batch production. I would. Um, but batch production, I mean, producing five videos at a time. And that way you have a series to send people to, and then you can spend a month sending people to that series. You know, the idea is this, the idea is sort of like I make a video and it gets 17 views and now I'm depressed and now I don't make a video for two more months, right? That's the problem. Make a video that's exciting and YouTube will find people to put it in front of. It's, it's better if they have other videos on your channel with which to pull from for relevancy's sake, right? So when YouTube, when somebody is watching your first video, Karen, you want to have a second video that's ready to, uh, to appear in the play next. And what we do as business owners is we're, we're like risk averse, you know, so we always kind of go, I'll, I'll make one. And, and that's good for a prototype or a, a plastic molding, but it's not good for YouTube. It, with YouTube, one is one series, but I would even go a step farther and say one year. You know, spend a year on YouTube and, and give up the rat race of Facebook. Give up the rat race of blogging for SEO. And I'm not talking about what Deborah Schroeder does. I'm talking about like best Oceanside thing blog, right? Uh, Karen, what do you do? Oh, we'll go ahead and unmute your mic, Karen. I'll let you try it on your end. Thank Hi, you. hi, how are you? Mm -hmm. um, I am a direct. I'm with a direct sales company, and I sell uh, artisan sterling silver jewelry, and I help women create their own businesses. And yes. my focus okay. is really to help other women. Yes. Um, so I get it. Multi-level, right? Direct sales. Direct sales. And yeah. and it's highly, highly visual. So what I would be doing is I would be doing a series on Mother's Day gifts. Oh, Karen, why couldn't you have been here? I month? did that on Facebook. But you did one. And you did it on Facebook where it's going to be dead in a week. Like nobody will ever see it right. again, right? You, you got to do it on YouTube where you jump off the hamster wheel and you actually have marquee pieces that will last for a long time. So what I would do is like do best Mother's Day gift for emerald lovers, best Mother's Day gift for ruby lovers, best Mother's Day gift for gold lovers, best Mother's Day gift for the silver uh, lover and, and so on and so forth. You have bracelets for, you know, and, and here's the thing is that those videos could be getting you sales next year too. Right. Right. We make Christmas videos every year, right? Like how to do Christmas marketing. And every year those videos pop up back to the, you know, to the top of the recommended. 
But that's, that's where I would go with you. I would leave aside the business um, opportunity and I would keep that in your inner funnel. So okay. on YouTube, you're, you're selling product and you're growing a customer base. But when they become customers, that's where now maybe you have a private section of videos on Vimeo where, where you're actually exposing them to the, to the business model or you're just doing that with um, um, video conversations. In fact, in the video sales machine, I teach you how to make an email nurture system with video for your leads. And mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of like the key thing is get them, get them to contact you first. This is MLM specific, by the way. Get them to contact you first and then have a separate thing taking them to the, because you know what, here's the thing. Not everyone's gonna wanna join the business, but they might still buy jewelry from you. Right. You know, and so you wanna kind of like poke at the, the raptors on Jurassic Park, poke at the fences, testing mm -hmm. it for weaknesses. That's what, that's what you wanna do with your, uh, with your private video series. Okay, thank 